In most of my videos, I end up using looping noise textures, whether it's for looping the textures in the shader editor or for looping displacement within the geometry node editor. This setup requires me to add in multiple noise textures, other supporting nodes, and then adding in multiple keyframes to get it to loop. I want to change all of that to create one particular node whose input parameters we can change to determine the number of frames after which it will loop and also control all other properties from that node itself so that we don't have to add in any keyframes to get the perfect looping animation every time. We'll create one version for the shader editor as well as one version for the geometry node editor and we'll mark them as assets to use in any future application which will save us a lot of time in the long run. With that out of the way, let's actually figure out how we can create these simple custom master nodes. In our default scene, the first thing that we'll do is bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows and click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Now, to actually see the changes, we'll go ahead and switch our viewport shading to rendered and then we'll start. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that to create a looping texture, you're going to need a noise texture and the actual noise texture has to be set from 3D to 4D. So once you've added that in, a quick tip is directly pressing Control G without any of the inputs or outputs connected allows you to have all of these inputs and outputs connected directly within the subgroup without having to connect them up manually. If you press this back arrow, you can see we now have a new node group with all of the individual parameters that can be set by us. We'll change the name of these in a while, but before that, let's just go back inside by pressing that button and playing around with the details. Now we know that to create the loop, we need two noise textures. So let's press Control Shift D to make a duplicate with all of these actually linked up so that we don't have to reconnect them again. Now we don't want to use this W directly because the W slider is what's going to allow us to create the loop. So let's just remove these W connections. And if you want to use these shortcuts like control right click to remove connections, you have to make sure that you have the node wrangler enabled from your preferences. Now these two noise textures have to be mixed together. So let's just remove this output, press shift A and search for a mix color node and connect the color from this texture into socket A and this texture into socket B. And this result can go into the output. Now I don't want this output factor to be present. So I'll just select the group output, go to the group properties over here, select this factor and press this minus button to remove it. Similarly, to actually see what we've created, we'll press this button to go back to the master node setup and take this color and plug it into the base color of the principled PSDF so that we can see it. Apart from that, I don't want it to actually be color. So I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp node so that it becomes black and white and we get some more contrast, which will make it much easier for us to see. We'll increase the contrast to something like that. And then we'll go back into the group by pressing this button. Now, the idea to create a looping texture is that this value is going to go from zero to whatever value and the factor is going to go from zero to one. When the factor is at zero, it is going to be taking only this noise texture into consideration and this noise texture is going to have a W value at zero. Of course, we're going to change it in a while such that it doesn't have to start at zero, but can start at any value. But whatever value this is, is what's going to be taken as the output when this factor is zero. Then once the factor becomes one, only this noise texture will be taken. And hence, at the end, whenever we want the loop to restart, this value should go to a value of zero. So if this W value goes from a value of zero to maybe a value of one, then this W value has to end at a value of zero, but has to move by a total of one units. Since we can't start it from one and go to zero because that'll make it go forward and then backward, we're gonna start this at a value of minus one and then have it end at a value of zero. So that way we'll get a perfect loop in texture. So we'll deal with this W value first, but let's first create a method of changing this factor from zero to one within the number of frames specified for the loop. So to do that, we'll press shift A and search for a value node and we'll add in a driver. So to add in a driver, we can just select this and type in the value hash frame. So this way, if you actually play the animation, it's going to change according to the frame number down here. So whichever frame number you're on is the number that's going to be given as the output from this value socket. But we don't want this value to go indefinitely according to the frame number. We want it to change from zero to one every time it reaches the number of frames that you want to loop. So first thing that we need is the actual number of frames that we want to loop. So to do that, we need another group input. So to add in a group input, we'll just come here and for the inputs, we'll press this plus button to create a new input. We'll change the name of this input to loop frames. And I want this to be present above the W. So I'll just press this up 
arrow until it goes right under the vector. So we can actually determine what this loop frames is or give an input to the loop frames in the actual node from the output over here. So let's go back and mention whatever frames you want over here. So let's maybe go with 100 so that it loops every 100 frames. So now as this goes from zero to this value, the factor should go from zero to one. Now we can do that by using a map range node. So let's search for a map range and take this value as the value. Okay, so right now we want the max value that this goes up to to be the loop frames. So let's take this and plug that into the from max. So now as this goes from zero to the loop frames number, which is zero to 100, this will get mapped out from zero to one. So that way, if we plug this into the factor, once we reach frame 100, it'll go all the way to a value of one, which means it'll take in this noise texture. And at frame zero, it'll take in this noise texture. But let's say we don't want to end the actual animation at 100 frames itself. Maybe we want it to loop twice. So in that case, the end is 200. If our end value is at 200, the problem with this setup right now is that it's just going to stop at a value of one once the frame number crosses a value of 100. And that's because we're mentioning that the max value that the input is going to give is going to be 100 itself. And after that, it'll just remain as 100. We don't want that. We want it to also loop back to zero. So to get it to loop back to zero, we'll press shift A and search for a math node and we'll switch this to modulo. So modulo allows us to get the remainder after division. So if we take the frame number and divide it by the loop frames and take the remainder as the output, we'll get a value that goes from zero to loop frames, which is 100. And then as soon as the frame number becomes 101, the output will become one again. So it'll go from zero to 99 and then loop back to zero all the way to 99 and so on and so forth again and again. So now that we have this setup, we have the factor that's going between this noise texture to this noise texture every time we reach the loop frames number. Number, but we have to change the W accordingly as well. Now this W is going to have to go from a value of zero to W max while this goes from a value of zero to loop frames. So because we need this to change according to this, we're gonna have to use another map range node. So let's take this map range and press shift D to duplicate it. Now the value is again going to be this value itself because we're gonna be changing it based on the frames. So let's take this, plug that into the value. And now let's see what's happening. We're trying to map the total number of frames to this W value. So the total number of frames is loop frames. So let's take this and plug that into the from max. Then the two min is zero and the two max has to be this W value that we have over here. And because this is no longer going to be W and it's just going to be the maximum value for the W, I'm actually gonna select it over here and rename it to W max or max W. Now let's take this and plug that in right here to the two max. And now we can take this result and plug it into the W. So now we have a setup such that as the frames go from zero to the loop, the W value will go from zero to the W max on the first noise texture. Now the second noise texture has to have a very similar setup, except it has to go from a value of negative of this W max all the way to zero. So to create that, let's just duplicate this map range node. Again, take this input from right here as the main value. The from max is again going to be the loop frames. So let's take it and plug that into the from max. Now, as we said, the two to min has to be the negative value of the W max. So to make this W max into a negative value, let's press shift A and search for a math node and simply multiply by a value of minus one. So let's choose multiply and choose minus one as the second socket and have the first socket as the W max. So let's take this and plug it in right there and take this value and plug it into the two min. Now we can take this result and plug it into the W so that when we finally play our animation, we should get this sort of a loop that perfectly loops every 100 frames. Now, clearly we're not getting a perfect loop. Something's wrong. And if you see the two max has to be a value of zero because the two min is zero. This min and this max have to be the same value. So now when we play the animation, it should be a seamless loop every 100 frames. Now we're seeing no change at all once we've done that. And that's because we still haven't mentioned what W max should be. So let's press this back arrow and change W max to maybe a value of one. So now when we actually go into the group, let's play the animation and you should see a seamless transition at frame 100 and at frame 200, it should perfectly loop back. If we go and have the end frame at 100 itself, if we change between 100 and zero, it should look the exact same. So on frame 100, it looks like this. And on frame zero, it looks exactly the same, which means we have a perfectly seamless animation loop. 
that loops every 100 frames. As long as it's a multiple of 100, you'll get a perfect looping animation as well. So that is something that is very useful. However, there's still something that's missing from this setup, and that is the actual seed. Let's say I don't want this particular look for the noise texture. Normally, we just change the W value, but now we're using the W value for this, and we've made it in such a way that it has to go from zero to whatever W max that we've selected. I don't want that. I want there to be another value that we can change, just like a seed value, which will allow us to change the overall look till we get something that we're happy with. So let's actually take a look at how we want that to change so that we can model it correctly. Right now, if we have noise texture one and we have noise texture two, the input for noise texture one is going from zero to whatever W max is. So maybe we'll just keep it at 10 for this example. And noise texture two has to go from minus 10 to a value of zero. So we want to change this start value from zero to any other value. So what we'll do is we'll maintain this W max as the actual difference between these two values. So 10 units. So W max is going to determine what the difference between these two numbers are. So let's say we have a W max of 10 itself and this C value we keep at seven. That way value one should go from a value of seven to a value of seven plus 10, which is 17. And because this is going from seven to 17, we know that the value of two has to end at a value of seven. So let's change that to seven, which means it has to start from a value of seven minus 10, which is a value of minus three. So we have to be able to create this particular setup. So if we actually take a look at it, this value is going to become just the seed value and this value is going to become the seed value plus the w max right now this was kept at just w and this was kept at zero so now it's going to be seed and this is going to be seed plus w this value however is now going to become minus w plus c because if we take minus 10 which was minus w and we add in the seed value of 7 we get minus 3 so this is going to become minus w plus c and this value is just going to remain as c so let's take another example to just make sure that this value works for whatever we do. Let's say we have a seed value of 20 and a W value of 2. In that case, this is going to go from a value of 20 all the way to 22. This, however, will have to go from minus W, which is minus 2, plus the seed value, which is 18, all the way to just the seed value, which is 20. And because we have this value and this value as the same, we know that it's going to loop, which means, yes, our logic is working correctly. The difference between this is 2 units, the difference between this is 2 units, which means it will be a seamless loop without there being any speeding up or speeding down. So we'll keep this on screen while we just model that over here. So right now for noise texture one, which is this, we want the two min to become the seed value. So let's add in a new seed value as an input. So let's come down here, press this plus button to add in a new socket. We'll change the name to seed. And now the two min is going to be just the seed value. The two max, however, is going to be the seed value plus W max. So let's press shift A and search for a math node. We'll keep it on add itself and we'll do seed value plus W max from here and plug this into the two max. Now I know this looks like it's getting very convoluted and messed up. But the best part about this is that once you've set it up, you will no longer have to look into this. And as long as you understand this logic, everything in here actually becomes readable, even though there's way too many noodles going around here and there. Now for the second map range node, which is over here, we need the two min to be minus W plus S. We already have this minus W over here. We need to add in the S. So let's take this add node, press shift D, plug it in here and add in S or the seed value from here. Now the two max has to just be the seed value. So let's take the seed value and plug that in right over here. I really hope this explanation was satisfactory and you figured out how to create this particular node seamlessly. So hopefully if everything's understood properly, let's go ahead and play the animation to see whether we have a perfect loop. And as you can see, even at frame 200, it's a perfect seamless loop and we go back right to the start. We can go to this master node over here and play around with all of the normal noise values, such as increasing the scale, increasing the detail, maybe the roughness as well. And we can always reduce all of these, maybe increase the distortion. And you have our basic noise texture itself, but we also have this loop frames, which allows us to select how many frames after which it should loop. If you don't want it to change at all, you can just keep this at zero. And we also have the W max, which will determine how much it's going to move within those frames. So let's say the loop frames is 100. If we keep a W max at something like 0.1, it's going to move by a very little amount every single frame. On the other hand, if you have the W max at something like 20, it's going to move a lot each particular frame and we're going to get a much more chaotic motion. So that is how you can use this particular node. And of course, if you don't like the way this looks, you now have a seed value that you can change as well 
to get a completely random different distribution based on what seed value you choose. The next thing that we have to do is mark this as an asset. So let's select this, go to the node option over here. We'll label this as noise loop underscore texture. And then we have to go down to this properties and make sure that we change this name. This name is what's going to show up in our asset browser. And if you don't know how to use the asset browser, definitely check out this video over here, which will show you exactly how to use the asset browser and why it's going to save you a lot of time and hence exactly why you should be using the asset browser if you aren't already. So now let's change this to noise loop underscore texture as well, and then right click it and choose mark as asset. Once you've marked this as an asset, you can always open up your asset browser in another window. And then if you just search for noise loop texture, you should be able to find it and click and drag it right into your scene or whichever material you're about to use. So that actually creates the noise texture for just the shader nodes. You can create the exact same thing for geometry nodes as well. However, I think I'm gonna leave that for for a future video, which will also help brush up your memory for how to create this particular node as well. We'll be adding in even more functionality to that node when we create it for the geometry nodes. So I definitely recommend staying tuned for when that video comes out. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this, definitely check out other videos on my channel because I post videos every single day. I've created other custom textures or nodes as well for the shader editor where you can dissolve materials just like this. And if those sound like something that you'd be interested in looking at, definitely check them out as well. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and don't forget to stay creative.